Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, uh, I have been single-handedly trying to make this channel a place for genomic investors to find the latest information in the business. It's hard to do without a team. If, we ha if I had a team, uh, they would be out all over the place looking at the websites and other things and getting information. Um, but uh, I'm still satisfied with the progress we have made. I think we have made good progress. Our channel has grown very quickly to almost, uh, it's touching 4,000 uh, 4, uh, subscribers now. It's just a matter of days before we touch 4,000. So I thank each and every one of you for giving me the support and encouraging me and keeping me going. Uh, and um, I can't be uh, much more fortunate than I am because of the kind of community we have out here. That said, I'm trying to improve the quality and provide more variety in the programming out here. Uh, so yesterday I had uh, Sandeep come over, day before yesterday I had Sandeep come over. Uh, he came to my studio and he recorded a segment uh, uh, on um, uh, CRISPR therapeutics, fundamental analysis of CRISPR therapeutics. Uh, Sandeep holds a CSC uh, certificate, that is Canadian Security Scores Certificate. So he understands uh, uh, fundamental analysis. And uh, I was speaking to him and we agreed that he will uh, come on the channel at least twice. So we are working out a format in which we can collaborate and bring to you some fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis uh, combined uh, for the genomic sector. Uh, so it's going to enhance our offerings going forward. Uh, please uh, wa wait for uh, more announcements. We are in the early stages, but hopefully by from next week onwards, we should have something going on a regular basis. Uh, that said, today I bring you news of CRISPR therapeutics that might be of use to you. So let's get started. <music> Welcome back, friends. Vertex and CRISPR Therapeutics announced last Thursday that their exacel therapy um, uh, is up for approval at FDA. And as you know, exacel is addressing two conditions. One is TDT and the other is SCD. These are two separate approval cycles that are going on in parallel and one will finish before the other. Watch carefully because approval dates are now available and you can time your purchases appro appropriately. I'm going to talk about them in this video today. The FDA accepted the biologics license applications for a single therapy the company's designed to treat two blood diseases. The agency uh, granted a pri priority review for the sickle cell disease program with an approval decision expected by December 8, 2023. So friends, all along I've been saying it's going to be towards the end of the year or the first quarter of 2024. I think we were right. Uh, the first approval is coming for sickle cell disease on December 8, 2023 for Exacel. And the standard review for transfusion dependent uh, beta thalassemia, that is TDT, uh, with a decision expected by March 30, 2024. That's almost at the end of Q1, 2024. Can you imagine how much more accurate we could have been? So I think these dates have already been committed. So uh, it could happen just before that or uh, earlier than that, but I, I'm hoping not later than that. CRISPR and Vertex also announced that clinical trials for both conditions met their primary and secondary endpoints. So this reduces the risk of uh, the uh, thing not getting approved. A, s a remarkable 94% of sickle cell patients went at least a whole year without tiny painful uh, blood clot uh, crisis that so often riddle their uh, uh, lives. And 89% of uh, TDT patients did not require their regular blood transfusion for at least a full year. So friends, this is a very, very strong resounding uh, success. And as I mentioned earlier in uh, how FDA does its approval cycle, if you have not seen that video, just go back to our uh, homepage on YouTube and scroll down for FDA methodologies. So I have put the entire uh, cycle of you know how a uh, therapy or a drug enters uh, FDA uh, clinical trials and how it exits with approval, the whole stage in between uh, cycle two, cycle three, and all that stuff. So you can find uh, you can find all the uh, details out there. So um, uh, in this case, uh, right uh, when you look at all these. Uh, uh, results. Um, one of the uh, things that FDA keeps in mind in their approval is that they are looking at whether the current um, therapy that is being looked at for approval is better than or equal to something else that is already available in the market. So in this case, I think uh, uh, Exacel blows out the competition 
and uh, I am thinking that uh, the approval is more or less certain. Uh, I, I, the risk factor of not getting approved has m uh, become very, very low. So we have to, we'll, we'll be witnessing CRISPR share prices firming up. And uh, uh, Franco Locatelli, one of the leaders of the studies and a professor of pediatrics in uh, Sapienza University of Rome, expressed that this therapy offers the potential of a functional cure for patients. And those of you who do not follow my uh, HIV series, uh, for you I'd like to explain what is a functional cure and what is the opposite of a functional cure or what is better than the functional cure. A functional cure um, uh, uh, addresses the condition that a patient suffers so that for a, a temporary period of time uh, the condition is not there uh, but the underlying cause is uh, still going to generate the condition and the functional cure is going to keep on uh, preventing the condition from manifesting itself. So in case of HIV, uh, a functional cure will continue to uh, keep the viral loads uh, low, but the latent HIV will not be killed. That's why it is called the functional cure. So uh, when it comes to uh, Exacel, it's going to be a functional cure. So I do not have information right now how often they have to go for uh, this treatment. Is it going to be once a year or once in every couple of years? I do not know. But uh, the data was uh, presented in the annual uh, European Hematology Association Congress on Friday and only includes about half of the total number of patients in each trial and a median follow-up of nearly 44 months. In terms of treating both diseases, the underlying cause can be addressed by rectifying a single genetic mutation in hemoglobin the crucial protein responsible for transporting oxygen. However, the initial CRISPR tool used in the therapy has been more effective at disrupting genes rather than repairing them. Fortunately, scientists have developed an ingenious solution by activating a form of hemoglobin that is typically produced uh, during fetal development by utilizing CRISPR to target a gene called BCL11A, the inhibition on uh, fetal hemoglobin production is lifted. Uh, this approach has shown promising results in animal and human studies as, uh, as the increased fetal hemoglobin production appears to compensate for the dysfunctional adult hemoglobin. The treatment starts with uh, collecting a patient's blood stem cells which are shipped to the lab for editing. After a, qu a quality check, the edited shell cells are shipped back uh, to the patient who undergoes chemotherapy to make uh, space for the incoming cells. While the sickle cell patients did not experience uh, severe side effects associated with the CRISPR therapy, it's important to note that two patients with uh, beta thalassemia encountered severe adverse reactions. These reactions included acute respiratory disease syndrome, a dangerous lung injury, and uh, uh, however, out of 35 patients enrolled in the sickle cell study, 17 of them received the therapy long enough to be included in the interim analysis. The analysis primarily focused on evaluating whether uh, the edited cells and increased fetal hemoglobin production could prevent uh, vaso-occlusive crisis, which are painful and uh, potentially dangerous uh, blood vessel clots. Remarkably, all but one of the uh, patients remained free uh, from these crises for at least a full year. None of the patients uh, required uh, hospitalization uh, due to vasco uh, cri crisis, thus meeting uh, both the primary and secondary endpoints of the study. The increased production of fetal hemoglobin accounted for approximately 40% of the total hemoglobin in their blood. In the beta thalassemia trial, which involves individuals who often require blood, uh, regular blood transfusions to maintain their health, a total of 27 out of 48 patients received the therapy for a sufficient duration to be included in the analysis. Among those patients, all but three managed to, uh, to go without any blood transfusion for at least one year. Friends, that's a big relief for uh, these patients. Additionally, they achieved the specified hemoglobin level in their blood for a minimum of six months, successfully meeting the primary and secondary endpoints for the study. It is worth noting that uh, even in uh, two of the, even though in two of the patients uh, that did not meet the primary endpoints, they sub saw substantial reduction of 80 and 96% uh, in the transfusion volume. So overall, I think this is a fantastic uh, result. CRISPR Therapeutics and uh, Vertex are slightly ahead of their competitor, Bluebird Bio, which submitted its gene therapy for sickle cell disease, that is low cell, to the FDA in April. Bluebird's treatment uses a lentiviral vector to deliver the adult hemoglobin gene into blood stem cells for a, for a patient. Bluebird anticipates that the agency will accept its uh, filing 
A spokesperson for Bluebird said Friday that the company did not have an update and expects to hear from FDA by the end of the month. So well friends, I hope uh, you liked this video and would press the like button. Also please subscribe if you have not already done so. And overall just to summarize, uh, this is a very good news for CRISPR therapeutics. Uh, more or less, it uh, assures that it's going to be uh, lower cell is going to be approved. And I'm also looking forward to Bluebird Bio getting a bit of a boost uh, when they get a date by which uh, their approval will be due. So we are looking forward to all those uh, milestones in the very near future. And friends, uh, that means CRISPR is going to start uh, moving on an upward trajectory. That's my opinion. Uh, it's not financial advice, but uh, I wanted to bring this information to you as soon as possible so that you can make your own decisions. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.